Today I'm going to be making a cake plate and I'm using three pounds of clay. This is the old-fashioned cake plate. It's simply a disc. And so what you want to be thinking about when you're making this is that the cake plate gets compressed so you don't have S cracks. Anybody here get S cracks in the bottom of their plates or pla uh, pie dishes or anything of that sort? Uh, just take your time and compress it and I'll show you how to do that. So, okay, so you notice I did not wedge this clay. The clay from the bag <clears throat> has gone through a de-airing pug mill in Ohio before it's sent to us. So I am going to turn my wheel on. The tools that I use for this are, I use a half a clothespin, a little trimming tool, my needle tool, a rib, I use a sponge and a ruler. And with those tools, I can pretty much make what I need. This I just do a little trimming afterwards. And the rib, these ribs are wonderful for compressing. So that's it. If you have questions, just ask along the way. So I'm using three pounds of clay. Let's throw it on here. And this wheel is a whisper, so it's the one I try and use for demonstrating because there's no noise. I used to have a whisper, but I kept leaving it on all the time because I didn't know it was on. My other wheel rumbles. So I'm going to wedge or uh, center this. And then this clay shrinks 12%, so I want to end up with. 10 and a half inches or 11 inches. So I'm going to make this 12 inches wide. So it's got to go all the way out here. But you can see it's very thin. So, want me to get it for you? Oh, no, that's okay. I measured it. It's 10 and, um, 10 and 3 quarters. Yeah. So uh, that was the one. I made two, three, and she took the other two, and the other two were 11 inches, which is what she wanted. She wanted it, to, uh, the lady who ordered it, wanted it to be as close to her grandmother's cake plate as possible. Was her grandmother's ceramic? Was the grandmother's ceramic? I, you know, I, I think it was a commercial one. I, I don't think it was a handmade one, but she couldn't uh, find one anywhere, and so she came to me and asked me to make one. So this is the way I center. <clears throat> I, I always brace my uh, elbows against my legs, and I'm up here just like I'm riding a horse. I have my uh, legs against the splash pan, leaning forward, and I lock my hands together. This isn't the way I learned how to center, but I find I like I like not to hurt. <laughs> I don't want to hurt. So I, I try and preserve my uh, back and neck. And so I think about my forearm muscles. So I'm going to push across, just like a mechanical arm with this one. And I'm pushing down with my right. I'm right-handed. So once I get this fairly flat, then I'm going to put a hole in here. Put some water in the hole. And I'll show you how much. There's probably about an inch of clay here in the bottom. So I've got this much clay. And I want it to be about this at the end. So right now I've got a good inch of clay. And then I'm going to put my fingers in here. And what I'm doing is I'm opening it up just a little bit so I can get the heel of my right hand inside. The way that I do this, I'll clean off my fingers. I've found over the years I can get a nice um, pull if I take my left hand, I put my right hand in, and I put my the edge of my left hand fingertips right on my cuticles. And that gives me a nice pull because I'm pulling that first little, what is this called? First little joint of my fingers. Bonnie probably knows what these are called. But my first little joint, you know, that that is stronger than if I were trying to pull it just with one hand. So I found that I can double up. The more I can brace, the better. So I'm going to open it up until I get my I can get the heel of my hand in. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to push across. This is one of the few times I don't brace my elbow. <clears throat> so I'm going to 
start here. My left hand is just a guide hand, just in case it starts to go off, go off center. And I'm gonna gently push down and out. Once it starts to move, it'll go pretty quickly. So you have to gauge and start um, letting off as you go out. So I'm gonna push down and out. And if there's any, because I want this to be very flat, if there's any extra clay out here, I want to pull that away so that this can ride nicely. No questions? I'm surprised. No questions. Well, big question that people ask when I make really flat pieces, what about these holes? Because does the clay, I mean, obviously this, the clay is going to go down in these holes when I push. But basically, if you're going to trim the back of this. So you're going to trim that part away so you don't have to worry about that. So right now this is what it looks like. I'm going to start again in the middle, push down and out. And I'm going to measure, try not to get clay in my tee. So I've still got a good inch to go. So I'm going to start in the middle and push pretty hard with the heel of my hand and push down. Colleen's laugh. So that's getting thinner as you in the middle. Oh. And it's, yeah, it's getting thinner. And I haven't started, I'm just pushing down and out. I haven't started to push, uh, to compress yet. So I'm asking the clay to go down and out. And if I didn't compress it at the end, it would crack. It would probably, I'd probably get some cracks in it. Let's see how much farther. Still quite a ways. So you're going to lose some of that wiring off. A little bit, mm-hmm. Yeah. But remember, I mean, I still have, let's see how much I have. I've got about three-eighths of an inch, so I can go a little bit more. And when I say I trimmed it, I basically I just go over it just one time on the back side just to get it as smooth as possible. How and thick is that going to be when, when, you're, when you're done throwing it? Probably between, somewhere between a fourth of an inch and a third. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and that's why when the lady asked me to make this, I was like, oh, that's so simple, just a disc. But, you know, it's not. It's really not because when you think of how much this shrinks, it's got, um, it's going to lose about an inch when it shrinks. Um, a piece shrinks in and it also shrinks down. It shrinks more in than it does down. In, in the firing. So, a little bit more. Okay. So, I've pretty much got. what I want as far as size. So now I'm going to flatten it just a little bit more with my rib. And then I'm gonna start compressing. And by compressing, what I mean is I'm just working the clay back in just a little bit. And that, that will help it not to, sh not to crack as it shrinks. Another thing I do uh, to help it not a wide piece, whether it's a platter or a plate or a pie dish, anything that's wide, say a, a very tall piece, but it's very wide also, is you want to, when it's, when it's drying, I will flip them several times. And to keep it very flat, it will be cut under um, when I finish it now. 
and then in a day or two, I'll come back, I'll cut under it again, I'll put another bat on top of it, and just like a pancake, and I'll flip them together, okay? And I'll leave it for a day or two, and then I, I don't have to cut under it now, but I'll flip it back. Um, if it's a tall piece that has a wide base, I will come and I will cut under it every day, or sometimes two or three times a day, just to go ahead because it's, it's pushing down, the weight is pushing down, so I'll cut under it. Um, and then when they're fired, wide pieces, what I do is I will take some uh, medium grog usually, or fine grog, and I'll put it on the kiln shelf, I'll sprinkle it on, and if you take and you sprinkle grog on a kiln shelf, and then um, imagine that there's like a little pile of grog, I'll take a ruler and I'll go back and forth across it and that will smooth it out very fine and but the grog acts as little rollers when it's firing so if you have uh, a wide piece there on the kiln shelf and it for some reason a little bit of it gets stuck it'll catch in the firing it could crack and it could crack in different ways um, and then when I uh, glaze the piece I, again, I put grog on the shelf, oh, if it's a wide, wide piece. I put grog on the shelf, smooth it out, and fire it. You have to be careful because for a wide piece, I use whole shelves. Because if I use a half shelf I, and it's a glaze firing, you don't want to push that fine grog down onto your other glazed pieces. After the firing, what I do, I take the piece up and then... Um, I try and recycle the grog because there's nothing wrong with it and I put it back in the grog bag and use it again and again. But sometimes it's so fine, um, I just uh, throw it away, but you can put it in your flower bed. Uh, hurt anything. So I usually will compress the piece back and forth five or six times and it's whether or not you want a spiral in the middle whether you leave that little spiral. For these uh, pieces, she, the lady wanted these very plain. So I just clean it up and I'll go over it with my rib and it's done. And it looks very simple, but these are kind of tricky. So I'm just gonna go over it. When you get into the middle, I call this the tail of the rib. And I don't know how many of you have smoothed something and then the, the end catches and yes. goes like this. Yeah. So what I do is I just take my non-dominant hand, my left hand, and I take that little tail and just push it up. And that will get you right into the middle. A lot of time, a long time ago, everything I made would have a peak in the middle, <laughs> right in the middle. And... I read or somebody told me that when you get into the middle, let's put a little bit more in it. When you get into the middle, I would always go into the middle and I would stop and I would go and then I'd have a peak. And what I do now is I go over and I go over just a third of an inch and just going over that third of an inch gets rid of that peak. And it's amazing and everything with me is threes. Everything's a third of an inch. <laughs> so here's our piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to the table and with plates and platters and wide pieces, I don't try and cut them off here because I've got my splash pan. And if I tried to cut it off here, um, I would have to come up because of the splash pan. And I still feel badly about cutting.